Hello students, this is Dr. Nisha Varshne and today I am going to start with your last topic uh, of the economics that is globalization. So again before starting of the chapter, again I am reminding you that please do not listen SST right also after every chapter you have to give chapter end test and get it checked. So that way you will understand what exactly you are learning and where are you reaching, fine. So the name of the chapter is Globalization and the Indian Economy. So uh, to start with, as you already know what is economy. Economy here that we are going to do our business with other countries. And uh, globalization means that uh, I give you example. Today if uh, India says that we are not going to do any business or we want to close our doors uh, with the world, nobody will go anywhere and there will not be any business in terms of export and import. Nothing will take place. Do you think that uh, will, will India survive? It is not possible actually. Reason behind it, you think logically. If you want to do any business, fine. So you cannot manufacture everything or, uh, or in your country only, right? You need to get some raw material from other countries. You can manufacture or sometimes it happens that not all machines are available in your country. For that, you have to get the finished product from other countries. So in terms of raw material, finished product, sometimes you need expert advice. So people, uh, experts come to your country to give their opinions. So in, in this uh, un understanding, you see, we have exchanged two things. People are coming and people are going. Things are coming and you are selling your product. So in both the ways, if you think and understand that globalization means that you are selling your products. You are exchanging goods as well as people keep on moving from one uh, place to another place in doing all these activities. And you can say tourism is also one of the uh, activity of economy that can also take place once you have relationship with other countries. This way, the globalization means that all countries are interconnected to each other and we are doing business as well as um, people do migrate uh, and they shift permanently in other countries and other country people do come to your country to live and to stay for some, some short period of a time. It depends. So all both the things you see, you think, uh, see carefully that uh, these are the activities of globalization. Means global means the world has become now one uh, umbre umbrella under now globalization is a word is called umbrella under which all countries are standing okay and all the countries are like living in a global village where headman is there yes we can say headman is UNO or bleak USA that we can discuss later on but the question is that all the people and all the countries have to support each other and we have to go right away. So we should not exploit any other country and no other country should exploit us as well. So these are the determinants of globalization that every country should keep in mind before doing any business with any other country. So globalization and the Indian economy, how India has started its globalization. So historically, we all know that uh, India has seen British period. So Britishers came to India for trade only right and gradually they started political domination by defeating our kings and they try they tried not they actually captured most of our country right so that was their policy which was actually wrong once you are going for business then do only business why do you want to capture that land or do you want to exploit people of that land those who are giving you the business so historically india was part of globalization and all the countries were part of it, but there were no strict rules and regulation. However, after 1945, Second World War, UNO was formed in which certain guidelines were defined for all the countries to do any business or any exchange under the head of WTO that is called World Trade Organization in 1995. It came into the formal picture. 
in the uh, from 1945 then 1995 it was there but not formally but after uh, making of wto it came into formal picture that if any country feels that the other country is exploiting or there is some problem in doing business so the wto can intervene can and help that country okay so everything that we are going to cover here so what is globalization in nutshell globalization is like that we are part of a global village all countries cannot uh, directly or indirectly are part of globalization they cannot close their uh, economies by saying that no i don't want to do any business with any country so they may be in small uh, you know exchange or you can say the economies are so small that they have only bilateral relationship with one two countries not all but ultimately they are they all of us are part of globalization so and the indian economy so role of indian economy here so let us start from here a uh, page number 55 you can see few photographs photographs are shown here of a market and in this market it is written that whatever is produced in the globe on the on, on this globe whatever is produced on this globe is available in these markets means you don't have to worry that you, whatever you are buying where it is being manufactured and who is manufacturing it so that entire process behind uh, the manufacture manufacturing of any good is none of your business it is all about that you have to go as a consumer and you have to buy the product so this is outcome of globalization fine so let us move little more forward so in this in this picture it is explained that so many things are available in the market and all of them are not produced in your country they are produced globally but available in your local market how is this possible that we are going to understand in detail because it is directly connected with generating income and economics is all about money so production across the country this is a beautiful example given here production across the countries so how does it take place so it takes place with the help of mncs mncs are multinational corporations and sometimes we call them multinational companies uh these are the big companies those who have good amount of money and they look for cheap resources uh, in other countries and they take advantage of them then they manufacture their goods and sell in different different markets of the world fine for example that uh, you must be knowing about tata do you uh, and reliance these are local companies but you will find their products across the globe same way apple and samsung and so many companies they are not manufacturing their products in uh, india they are manufacturing there but they are available in india but they may be taking some sort of a help in terms of raw material or in terms of uh, uh, engineers uh, services of engineers from india so this way these companies functions so mncs are the big companies available in more than one nation and taking help from those nations in getting cheap labor cheap services cheap raw material or direct market to sell their product correct so this is called mnc through mnc through mnc only the, the entire production of globalization take place correct Uh, one more example to uh, make you more clear that uh, mncs uh, look for best options and they can do this best option if the government is providing them support system for an example if india does not have any relationship with any ex country so any indian um, uh, company cannot go to that country directly if there is no relationship on paper with that country of uh, of with india correct so mncs work when the government allows them and government are into many relationships with many countries today as i am repeating no country can say that we are closing our door and we are don't want to do any business so it cannot survive you must have seen our prime minister 
is into many kind of a such uh, you know talks and visits to different countries so why are the why is he doing so he's basically there to manufacture goods to help people and to do uh, investment that he welcomes other country to invest in our country invest means they have money they can uh, invest they can start with a factory manufacturing unit so our people will get the work as well as we will have better products to use also so many things are related to that so let us start production across the country so uh, there is a, <coughs> a box given here uh, a large mnc producing uh, industrial equipments designs its products in resource center in the united states and then has the component manufactured in china they these are then shipped to mexico and eastern europe where the products are assembled and finished products are sold all over the world meanwhile the company's customer care is carried out through call centers located in india so you can say uh, you can see here there how many countries are involved china mexico india directly involved in the process of uh, manufacturing any good or any product so this way mnc's work and this way production take place and this way globalization take place okay so what is uh, let us start writing here the first question of the chapter what is mnc how does it handle production across the globe oblique uh, in different countries what is mnc how does it handle or control the production across the countries fine so uh, after that we have uh, one more dark in bold letters a definition the goods and services are produced globally as a result production is organized in increasingly complex way so this is not an easy task for any company so the company has to uh, take a lot of risk because many countries are involved many people are involved many geographical political issues are involved assume in one country if there is a drought or there is a tsunami kind of a situation what will happen then your production will stop for some time and you have promised to x country that you will deliver the goods so mnc has to take lot of risk and it is not an easy task it is a uh, production take place in a very very complex way i hope it is clear to you what is mnc and how do they do production across the countries and this way globalization take place and we have to understand each and every country in detail with their political policies with the help of our government how are we having relationship assume uh, very common example if we don't have any relationship with pakistan so you can understand very well there is no chance for any indian uh, businessman to go and do any kind of a business in pakistan is that okay same way so we are in uh, all the companies or all the big players or all the uh, uh, businessmen are always in connection with the our government and they all they also propose things to the government that do this so this way we can make do business and the business will get income to the country itself fine let us take the one more example interlinking production across country okay so in the previous paragraph we just understood on a very you know a uh, broader way a definition now let, let us go into little detail so how uh, how do mnc's work so there are two types of work first you do investment in other country okay and uh, next you do trade trade means a uh, difference between investment and trade listen carefully investment means one i have money i am coming to your country and i am investing by starting with a manufacturing plant of a car assume now the car is manufactured in your country okay all the raw material from your country labor from your country but the stamp would be of my country fine so this is called investment now it this is on me where do i sell this car in india or in other country so this entire process is called investment 
foreign direct investment foreign companies are coming and they are investing their money in your company in your country that is why we are more into fdi for that uh, other countries uh, or other businessmen should come in our country because it helps a lot in providing employment and it providing uh, small small uh, manufacturing goods to the local companies assume in a car hundreds of things are you know inserted not all of those things are manufactured in that particular plant of cars small things can be ordered to the local manufacturers so who will get benefit out of it the local people correct so mncs do this one way this is called investment it is written here foreign investment and there is a good example also that you can see in nick uh, uh, on the next page in this light purple or bluish color box ford motors an american company is one of the world's largest automobile manufacturer with production spread over 26 countries of world ford motors came in india in 95 and spent 1700 crores to set up a large plant near chennai so did you understand so this company invested how much a lot of money so this way indians got the work and we also got some variety of cars in indian market so this is called the investment fine now let us move to the trade correct you can go through this page easily and there is one more example of kargil food food company so uh, this is other example kargil food is a american company fine but uh, they uh, uh, want to uh, in, uh, enter into indian market but on the other hand in india we have one more small com uh, company called parak food parak food uh, had built uh, had built a large network it had a access to indian market or you can say in every corner of indian market so what kargil kargil food did kargil food bought uh, this parak food and ownership transfer to the american company fine and the and the name would remain the same but there was an association so the work expanded that kargil food invested a lot of money they started working multiple four times more or 10 times more as the barak food was doing earlier so this is one of the other way that kargil is investing in india as a investor and of course and ultimately they are looking profits out of it so this way our local companies being shifted or you can say take over by the foreign company so this is other way of doing investment by buying small companies of india itself and then entering into the market Ra rather uh, starting with everything from a scratch as it was done by the ford company clear so there are two example of foreign investment given here so second question what do you mean by foreign investment explain with the help of example how does it take place what is foreign investment how does it take place explain with the help of example next we are going to see example of trade that we have on page number 59 foreign trade and integration of market here you are only uh, selling your product in other countries you are manufacturing products in your own country and you are taking that product and selling to the different countries which is very simple to understand fine so this is example of china basically china i, I hope it is clear china manufactures so many goods and it sells that product only it does not do any kind of investment in any other country because it has uh, uh, his its countries bigger enough and it it is a f first largest uh, populous country in the world so though there is no dearth of labor also skilled semi skilled or unskilled are found there and they have raw material also a very good amount, good amount of raw material available in china so china only sells its product so we have an example in yellow box chinese toys in india fine so chinese toys when it came to india they were comparatively cheaper than indian toys again i am repeating they are comparatively cheaper so normally a consumer sees if similar things are like is available on the table but the price are less so you will go fair you will buy that product which is comparatively cheaper so uh, chinese toys in india is a very good example to understand of trade foreign trade but it has a lot of problem that gradually this trade had did what 
Chinese toys replaced or you can say closed down our 70% of uh, Indian toys business. Yes, because they were cheap. So nobody were buying Indian toys. So this way Indian companies were closed down. So somewhere you can see these kind of a competition we see and no doubt about it. Our local people lost their business. So second example you can write, what do you mean by foreign trade? Explain with the help of example. So Chinese toys is one of the examples you can go through and read that. So far I hope it is clear what I am telling you. How does globalization take place? Means uh, what are the, uh, the uh, ways of doing globalization? So ways, fund is investment and other is your trade. So in the end it is written foreign trade thus results in connecting the markets or integration markets in different countries. It is all about markets just selling your product. You manufacture something in Indian market and sell across the world. So this is called integration of market. It will take place once your government is okay with that and if we are open to the world too for the globalization. Okay, so after explaining these two things to us, now they are coming to the definition of what is globalization. So it is little later, but the chapter name is explained after two, three page by explaining you the fundamental concepts. I hope it is clear. So uh, globalization, I am reading the uh, black uh, definition. Globalization is this process of rapid integration or interconnection between countries. MNCs are playing a major role in the globalization process. So what we are doing it, we are integrating the countries and who is playing the major role? MNCs. So we started with the MNCs, we understood that concept of MNC. Now we are understanding the concept of globalization and in that clock concept we are understanding how MNCs are functioning. Next, more and more goods and services, investment and technology are moving between countries because of MNCs. So very good example of call centers that world's 30% call centers or BPUs are found in India. Yes. So all foreign companies are taking help of Indian skilled labor to do their uh, services of call center. Correct. So I hope it is clear to you. Hmm? So far we have covered major three things. MNCs, investment, foreign investment and foreign trade. Next topic. So these were those were the ways but practically how does it take place? In talks no. What all things have made it possible? What all things have made it possible to for globalization to take place and to happen? Here we have the next question please write down what factors that have enabled globalization? what factors that have enabled globalization previously we did ways of globalization investment and trade here we are seeing the factors the so first factor is your technology correct so in the first uh, here i would like you to write so uh, technology as well as we have here in technology we have two things first is technology right first is technology and in technology write two things IT information technology one and two transport. I am repeating there are two major factors technology and government policies. In technology write A transportation and B information technology. So we are looking at the transportation first you can see a big containers are you know shown here in yellow box. So goods. How would they travel? People can travel, we can see that people are traveling. But what about the goods? In the end, we are we have to export and import things, no? So how are they uh, doing it? We How are we doing it? With the help of shipment. That is why whenever you order something, you always get in the slip, shipment, date, price, way, okay? So shipment take place with the help of containers. These are the big containers in which your things are being kept and transported from one country to another country. So in detail, how many ports are there, types of ports, types of shipments and so many things you can study in geography class 12th. Okay. So in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a simpler way to understand, because with the help of transportation and uh, sea of sea route, we can sell and we can buy the products from anywhere on this globe. Next I have talked about IT information technology. 
again come coming back to a yellow box there is a example showing how what factors have enabled globalization one example a news magazine published for london readers to be designed and printed in delhi the text of magazine is sent through internet to the delhi office the design the designer in the delhi officer uh, office get order on how to design the magazine from the office in london using telecommunication facilities the designing is done on a computer after printing the magazine are sent by the air to the london even the payment of money for designing and printing from a bank in london to bank in delhi is done instantly through the internet banking which is called e banking i hope today we all are doing it and we are well aware, aware about it had it not been there technology of it or internet or anything email and whatever had it been possible no so what has made it possible second is information technology so we have two technology transportation and it correct write down the question i have asked you to write next the third thing oh, sorry the second thing is called government policy again if government will not allow so who will do the business who can do the business nothing will come here in your country and nothing will go from your country correct today our um, uh, prime minister is saying vocal for local so that mean we should manufacture something in our country and sell it across the globe if there is a golgappa seller or you can say may laddu maker he or she should be able to sell that product across the globe so that is our vision and mission now next liberalization of foreign trade and foreign investment policy means if the government would li would liberalize liberalize means give freedom for other countries to come in your country and you to go outside the country so this way you can able to do the business else it is not possible i am coming back to the historical background after independence we were restricted we had restriction in doing the business there were a lot of you know formalities taxes import uh, on imports and exports so businessmen were facing lot of issues and uh, in the beginning years of 30 years of our country's independence we did not do much an economic you know achievement but gradually our country realized that it is not possible to close our door like this we have to be more open from 1990s we have then our prime minister narsimha rao and the finance minister manmohan singh brought a policy of lpg this is called liberal l for liberalization p for privatization and g for globalization that enabled our businessmen to do business outside on on flexible terms so they got the opportunity and uh, trade barriers were removed so what is trade barrier when there is restriction on doing any kind of a business activity is called trade barrier which was a part of our policy after the independence but from 1990s it was removed with lpg policy liberalization privatization and globalization you can read on removing barriers or restrictions set by the government is what is known as liberalization so one question can be asked what is liberalization a small question what is trade barrier barrier okay so after removing that we were able to do our business so that was the second part of which factors have enabled to do the globalization very important it comes all the time in the board maximum time it is asked a part of it or a complete depends fine so i have covered here one more topic now we are going to see which international organization is there to help us and to and, and to uh, you know um, modulate the things in such a way that no one country should exploit the other countries still we see developed countries are rich and there are so many asian and african african countries are poor so it may possible that the rich country or rich businessmen as in historical time we saw british era that they have actually exploited us by you know putting so many uh, things or trapping us into their policies of uh, exploitation this should not happen so wto is an organization of uno uno is an international organization and wto is its one agency which takes care of trade taking place across the globe and and uh, wto is there to protect the interest of weak and poor countries as well however 
as I've discussed, W2A is doing this work. This is a positive work if you see, if you hear it. But practically, we have seen that the, uh, uh, you can say the runners of WTO or those who are managing WTO, these people are um, most uh, are always in favor of developed countries as compared to the developing countries because they belong to those countries only. So again, I'm repeating UNO and WTO, we are going to do a, uh, in, a lit, uh, in a bit detail in class 12th political science. There I can explain you each and everything. What is UNO, what is WTO? And I can relate those things with the current scenario in the newspaper. Hmm? Here, you have to just remember, WTO is an agency who is looking after the trade taking place in the world. And today we have uh, approximately 160 countries member of it. So those 160 countries, if they are doing any business, they have to go via WTO norms and rules. So if there is any dispute, any problem, so WTO as a mediator can handle and can tackle those issues. Fine. There is one example of uh, indiscriminate, indiscriminatory practice of WTO. Yes, indiscriminatory practice of WTO, which is in favor of US more as compared to the poor people, poor country. Okay, so one is given here debate on trade practice. So there is a debate. Uh, I am telling you in a nutshell, I would like you to go through this in detail. Uh, issue is that in America, uh, only 0.5% are farmers. Only 0.5% are farmer and in our country, 50% people are in farming. So in America, 0.5% people are farmer. So their government and everything, uh, agriculture is completely mechanized. Okay. So the, their government give lot of help to them. And you can say in, in, in indirectly, they are very rich. Yes, farmers in America are, are very rich as compared to India. Now, uh, if their government is helping them and every facility is providing to them, so they sell their product on cheaper rates. Yes, they sell their products on cheaper rates because they are not spending from their pocket. The government is subsidizing. On the other hand, if Indian farmer is selling its product in an international market, so it is comparatively little higher in rates. So when both the farmers are selling something in international market, so our prices are little more as compared to the America's farmer. So there is a fight of deciding price. Here we see WTO is favoring uh, US more as compared to India or you can say developing countries. So this is called the debate on trade practices, correct? But still we want that WTO should favor developing countries and should change its practices and it should be in favor of developing countries more. Next question, please write down what is WTO? What is WTO? What are its objectives? And next question, in addition to that, you can write, there is a debate on trade practices of WTO explain. There is a debate on trade practices of WTO explain. Let's move to the next topic. Impact of globalization in India. So far it is clear, all the terms are clear. I'm repeating, write down. Open your NCRT as I'm telling you the question, write down, underline, I'm following the sequence of NCRT chapter only. I'm not taking you from, I'm not flipping from one page to another page. This way, after listening this lecture, you will be able to understand the chapter and write the answers. So impact of globalization in India, impact means here we are going to see the outcome. The outcome of everything is positive as well as negative. But there has to be the ratio. If positive is more, then neg a little negative can be ignored. If negative is more, then little positive cannot be taken. So we need to work on that. Coming back to the impact, it is again two sides. Globalization has shown positive sides as well as negative sides. So we have to minimize negative sides. Who will minimize? The government, the government steps and policies to bring it more positive. So benefit can be taken off globalization. It should not be like that. We should be exploited. Our Indian, farm, our Indian farmers or Indian labor or Indian people should be exploited. Hmm? So uh, here we have the competition. First of all, uh, let us talk about the um, positive side competition because of the competition because of the competition rates and prices of goods and services have come down 
because of the competition because if there is a competition then rates are always competitive they are not much high 10 rupee thing cannot be sold at 100 rupee 10 rupee thing is sold by one person in 10 or 12 or maximum 15 it cannot go beyond that so these are called the competitive prices first so second MNCs have increased their investment our businessmen have got the opportunity to sell their products outside okay top Indian companies have been able to benefit from the increased competition they have invested in newer technology and production method and raised their production standard also and we have also uh, come at par with the international market we have learned new technologies and we are achieving those goals of selling our product at international uh, market in international market with that standard only hmm? new uh, companies uh, other foreign companies have started investing in india as well this is the second one the third one i mean to say that cheap products i mean indian mncs have got benefited indian uh, and other mncs or investment are being seen in india hmm? and uh, moreover cheap good uh, employment is also generated yes employment as i've given you example of ford so employment is generated so it has helped indians to get new and better jobs prospectives hmm? So that was that more or less there are three and four positive sides. Whenever the question comes, what is globalization? Write its impact. So you need to explain the definition. Then you have to write positive side of globalization. One, two, three, four points. Negative side of globalization. One, two, three, four points. So whenever any question is asked, you have to explain it uh, in little detail. You cannot be, you cannot go cut to cut like in maths. Hmm? In social science, we expect you to write a little more. So impact is asked, so you need to explain the definition of globalization first. Then there are four points of positive side. Let us see some negative also. Negative is very easy. First, it is given in this uh, yellow box, uh, rising competition. So he is Ravi. He had a small factory of capacity theater and he had, I think, 20 working people under him. But gradually what has happened? He has lost his business because of the competition. The new companies or foreign companies are selling capacitor on a very cheap rates. So first issue is competition. Second is interference of MNCs in local market increased politically also. They start determining our labor laws. So that second thing that has also been observed. Third is that uh, when MNCs are coming, so they will not look after your welfare, they will look after their profit first. So they have increased the time of working hours. Previously, it was just seven or eight hours. Today, you can see people are working nine to 10 hours. Apart from this, they have brought such a flexible labor laws at any time they can fire you. Hire and fire policy they have adopted. So this has brought a lot of, uh, you know, inconsistency or you can say insecurity in the minds of the people that any time they can be fired off. This is an example of Sushila. You can see here a garment worker. Previously, she had a very good job. But after 1990s, her factory was closed down. Now she had to travel a lot and she is getting a less what which she was getting previously and her time has also increased so this way they also determined our wages they also determined the working hours mncs so this competition has brought a lot of things you know uh, as a concern in indian market so again two three negative and three four positive point that you have to keep once you will read that you can easily make out the uh, points but i will recommend you to go to my notes uh, which i will be providing you so this will help you in uh, getting the what exactly is the question and what exactly is the answer but i am the questions which i am telling you here you please write and try to make your own answer that will be the absolute thing to learn ssd however notes or you can say any help guide or book can give you those answers also but concept has to be clear what exactly globalization what is mnc what is competition investment trade wto its practices and last we expect to have a fair globalization the struggle for a fair globalization who will brought this fairness think what can you do because we are uh, a citizen is very you know average mind people to understand the consequence of any policy so the government has to be there to say if something is being uh, done wrong to its people uh, in terms of doing business or globalized policies so 
enter uh, entry and to stay in WTO and to make WTO more responsible and accountable towards developing countries. There should not be any exploitation. There should not be, you know, more competition that local people lost their livelihood. Correct. So and moreover, uh, one thing always be positive. If we will make local goods in India and sell, then it is going to be always beneficial rather buying something from the other con companies or countries. So import should always be lesser than the export. So if there is more export, we are going to be benefited. So this we need to see, understand um, uh, at the local level individual level, social level and political level. So we seek uh, positive uh, support from the government and from the WTO which is an international organization and with, with the help of the local uh, uh, policies. So this way the struggle for a globalization and last is the summing up. Summing up is the conclusion. So last question would be uh, how can we strive for fair globalization. So there is one protest is also shown in Hong Kong uh, uh, in 2005 against WTO norms. So some people are aware organizations are aware that WTO is not favoring uh, international market or you can say developing countries more so this way i hope it is clear we are we have finished the chapter here i am leaving the back exercise on you and if you have any issue any doubt i am just a mail away you can contact me i will reply or in doubt classes i can answer all your questions so for whatever questions i have covered 10 12 13 I would like you to write their answers yourself after reading the chapter and do the NCRT back exercise as well and in between that we have small small exercises also that can also be done which will help you in developing your confidence in understanding the chapter. Thank you so much.